Hey guys, today we are in the lab looking at electrolysis of copper sulfide. Here is what we need for electrolysis. We have our positive terminal here connected up to a graphite electrode. This is connected through the bulbin just so we can see it working. We've got our beaker of copper sulfate and then we need to pop that in there, turn it all on and watch it go. So I have my two electrodes in my copper sulfate. You can see that it's not touching. I'm just going to turn it on and you'll see that the bulb has come on, indicating to us that the circuit is now complete. If I just take these out of the copper sulfate solution, you'll see that the bulb goes out and then back in, you can see the bulb goes on, showing that um, putting the electrodes into the solution completes the circuit. Now we can just watch what happens. So you can see here on the positive electrode that we have bubbles coming off. And what I'm just gonna do, um, as the example suggests, is test this with a bit of moist litmus paper to see what happens. So blue litmus paper, is, moist blue litmus paper is the test for chlorine. And considering that we are testing copper sulfate here, I'm not entirely sure why the exam board wants me to test the um, oxygen gas that is coming off to see if it's chlorine, because it's clearly not. So we can see that the copper sulfate is still blue. Indicate, uh, sorry, the litmus paper is still blue, indicating that no chlorine has been produced, which is exactly what you would expect from copper sulfate solution. So I'd like to thank the exam board for making me do that. So it's been going for a while now and I'm just going to lift this up and hopefully you can see on the negative electrode which is this one here that we have some lovely copper being formed on there. When we have the electrolysis of copper two sulfates, we are putting in a solution that has copper two plus ions and sulfate two minus ions. Now, things that are positive are going to make their way to the cathode. Things that are negative are going to make their way round to the anode. And I've just written this on the side here, panic, Positive is anode, positive anode, negative is cathode. That's just worth helping remember which is positive, which is negative, the anode or the cathode. Now, what we are going to end up with at the um, cathode that is where our positive copper ions are going to go. So we are going to see a build-up of metal. So we're going to see the, the graphite or carbon electrode turning a nice bronzy colour. And what we're going to see is a colour change in the water, or in the solution rather, um, away from it being a nice blue colour as the copper comes out of solution and turns into a metal on the cathode, where the cathode is going to go a nice coppery, bronzy colour, the solution, the colour, the blue colour in the solution is going to fade. And then the equation that we are going to have at the cathode, we are going to have our copper ions, they are going to pick up two electrons and then they're going to turn into copper metal. Now if we look at our other acronym over here we have oil rig. Oxidation is loss of electrons, reduction is gain of electrons. Here we have gained electrons so this is going to be reduction. Now if we have a look at the anode I'm afraid this one isn't quite so obvious because what goes to that anode isn't the um, sulfate ions, it's actually just the oxygen. 
So that is going to be our O2 minus ions. So what you're going to see at the anode is bubbles. You are going to see a gas being released. And if you collected these bubbles, um, you could do the relighting glow and spint test for oxygen gas. Now the reaction that we're going to have going on at the anode is um, a reaction between the sulfate ions and the water and the anode. So we're going to have a hydroxide of ions from the water. They're going to lose four electrons and they're going to turn into oxygen gas and water. Now oil rig oxidation is loss. Here we are losing electrons. So this is oxidation happening at the anode.